first of all, thanks to, to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to uh, expose this work here. In this also is a very beautiful place, even if this picture has been taken a little bit in dark, but uh, <laughs> this expresses the fact that we have now discussions in front of the sea and the sun. Mm -hmm. So, um, we heard uh, a lot about uh, Hunt's coupling, and here we call it, uh, we, we have it is Janus, uh, sorry, it's Janus effect. So why we call it Janus? Uh, because uh, Janus was uh, some uh, god from Rome mythology who is actually a very good god, uh, uh, as is always depicted with two faces. So looking in opposite direction. So Hunt's uh, coupling we would see in metals and in strongly correlated metals has mainly two big effects which work sometimes one against each other. So. Uh, that's what we know, of course, about the rules in, uh, in atoms, and we've seen a lot of uh, talking about the uh, rules in uh, insulators. And of course, it's the way we, uh, we do the alpha of the atoms, and mainly we have to retain the fact that uh, the total spin wants to be the maximum, so it spins uh, on the, of the atom, of the electrons on the same atom, wants to be mainly aligned. But what happens? In, uh, in metals and in strongly correlated metals. Well, uh, it's much less clear, and of course, it, uh, these effects become um, very relevant when we go to the strongly correlated regime or the moderate strongly correlated regime, because that's where atomic physics gets into play uh, in, uh, um, in the delocalized <coughs> metals. Uh, so we model, uh, this is a model study, and we mainly focus on multiband. Hubbard model, which is characterized by uh, this uh, uh, term of hopping uh, of the different, uh, on different channels, so on different orbitals, uh, labeled by M. Uh, they can also have some crystal field uh, splitting, uh, which in the beginning we will keep to zero, so we'll have like the generic bands. And of course, this is the, so all these terms are the interaction terms in which we have uh, intra, intra orbital repulsion, inter orbital repulsion. I don't know if you can see the point anymore. And this is the Hund's uh, tendency of aligning the spins. Um, so um, the local plume interaction is different. So depending on the electrons occupying the same or different orbitals and on the neutral spin direction, uh, the Hund's coupling J is a measure of this difference, as I said. And we want to understand how it changes the correlation strength, so the metallicity properties of the system. And the difficulty lies in dealing with the localized, uh, so the atomic physics and the kinetic nature of electrons metal grouping. And we will use uh, mainly dynamical nature theory, which does that pretty well. Yes, good question. Do you have interorbital hopping? No. Only if this, in this model, it's just the generate bands and the hopping that is diagonal. So um, I will also you will look at uh, some. Uh, some results of this slave spin uh, mean field, which is a cheaper method, uh, very good for uh, multi orbital systems, and all these results have been backed up considerably uh, by dynamical mean field theory, but these are smoother and nicer. Um, so, we will focus on the quasi particle renormalization of factors, OT, uh, which is the quantity who measures the renormalization uh, of the metallicity properties due to a correlation. And it starts from one uh, for a non uh, interacting system, and it, it, the reduction uh, uh, is uh, signals the normalization of the mass and uh, and this, uh, yeah, and, <coughs> and scatterings uh, typically of uh, room normalized. Uh, so uh, let's say the lowering of the coherence temperature of the fermi liquid when it's strongly normalized <coughs> is then <coughs> signals uh, about transition. So when when it goes to zero, it signals about transition. Uh, it, this is uh, first results for the simple case of a two-band model, uh, in which we have so uh, we expect mod transition for every <coughs> integer filling. So uh, we will have a mod transition where we have two electrons in two bands, and when, when you have one electron or three electrons in two bands. So in the half-field case, you see that the, the zero, uh, uh, the, the, the j equals zero. So in absence of Kuhn's coupling result, we have some a uh, critical U for which one obtains uh, a mod transition, and this is strongly reduced by the presence of Hund's <coughs> The opposite effect 
is found in the uh, non halfing case, in which one has this red line for the non inter uh, for the J equals zero case for an absence of wound scarping, and wound scarping sends the U critical to which one uh, in which one finds the mod transition to very large values. So uh, the critical U is lowered by J only for half -fing. In all other cases, it is, it is enhanced. And in this graph, we will see that this result is more general than just for the two band hover model. Uh, here you also have the, the three band hover model uh, critical use as a function of J. And this is uh, this blue line and this red line are the two half -fing cases for the two models. And all the other cases see that uh, you can see that the critical is pushed very far away. So uh, this is easily rationalized by looking at uh, uh, atomic limits. Uh, so here is the easy one for the two band Hubbard model. For the two band Hubbard model is a little bit uh, more complicated, but uh, still the effect is very simple. The the Hund's coupling uh, splits the multiplets, and so the the mod gap, which I mean um, uh, the excitation spectrum of a mod insulator can be thought as uh, a broadened version of uh, the atomic uh, excitation spectrum. Uh, so the mod gap can be evaluated by seeing what's the energy cost in adding one electron, so going from, from the ground state of, of the, of the multiplet in which the ground state is, to the, uh, to the n plus one sector or to the n minus one sector. So one has to add one electron or remove one electron. And it's easy to see that the effect of wound scattering in the case in which the, the ground state is in the half field sector is to uh, uh, enhance these distances. So uh, the mod gap is enhanced, and correspondingly, uh, the critical U needed for going to the mod state is reduced because you need less Coulomb energy because this is enhanced by J. Uh, the opposite case, so this at half field, this is what happens. The opposite case happens in when, when you are like in the uh, non offset case, so like in the N1, the ground state lies in the N1, N equal 1 sector, the excitation energy is reduced because you want to go to this N equal 2 sector and J lowers the ground state in this sector. So overall the mod gap is reduced by J, the situation is inverted, and so you need a larger U for the mod transition to happen. So you critical U increases. So this is easily rationalized by this simple atomic limit arguments. And if you plot the same graph I showed you about, uh, just as a function of, of the moon scalping strength, uh, before it was the ratio J over U that was plotting, well, you see that the asymptotics are correctly captured by these this estimates of the mod gap I gave you here, based on the atomic limits. Now, what's the other phase of uh, the young drug, uh, moon scalping? Well, uh, the other phase is a dynamical effect, which is captured by the NFT, uh, and it's the lowering of the coherence temperature of the renormalized matter. So the more you, you, you the, the moon's carbon is strong, the more the coherence temperature of correlated metal is lowered. And uh, this is captured by the NFT, and it, it can be translated in a uh, of temperature language, and uh, is connected with the reduction of the ground state degeneracy. So orbital fluctuation help uh, uh, the, the, uh, the screening and when you form a big, uh, a big spin, uh, thanks to the wind scalping, uh, by aligning the spins, that big spin is uh, more difficult to screen. So the coherence, the gondo temperature and the coherence temperature of the thermal liquid uh, are lower. All this is also backed up by some energy calculations. So now, if we put uh, I mean, this, this effect is, of, of course, valid for all fillings other than just one electron or one hole, because in that case you have, you have no spins to be aligned, so you have no enhancement of this uh, 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 effect, which, the screening effects that, that you, you need to, to screen the, 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 the local electrons. So if we put these two uh, uh, phases together, we will see that we have different cases. When you have only one electron or one hole, I just told you that this uh, lowering of coherence temperature is absent. So we only have this, the, the enhancement of U critical. So this big arrow shows that uh, the, uh, um, only the U critical is pushed to high uh, correlations. And so uh, the wound scattering has mainly a decorrelating effect. 
only the, the, there's only the, the reduction of the mod gap that I showed you. On the contrary, in the half field case, if we have the, the two effects. So the mod gap, as I told you, this is the only case in which the mod gap is enhanced. And moreover, the, the temperature, the coherence temperature is suppressed. So the two effects collaborate. And we have so a strong prevalence of the mod insulating state. So the U critical is pushed down from the wind's cover. Then there is a very interesting case, which is all other cases. So in, in the three in the three band model, we only are left with n equal two or four. But if you go to more orbitals, there will be more of these non-half field, non-singly field cases. And in, in this case, the two effects have opposite, uh, the, the two phases of the Lung's coupling have opposite effects, so they compete. And they have and we have both the enhancement of the U critical, so the mod insulator is pushed far away, but also we have the reduction of the coherence temperature. This is very interesting uh, because uh, it's, it's a new effect and it's, it's a way of having strong correlations far from a mod insulator. So the, these three effects uh, go together to compose uh, one uh, picture, that one global picture that gives us a rule of thumb uh, for knowing what to expect from Hund's coupling in the different uh, compounds based on the feeling of the active orbitals. So this is summarized in this, uh, in this table, and so one sees that the first line is a, just one electron or one hole. The degeneracy of the atomic ground state is unaffected, so we have no lowering of coherence temperature, but the mod gap is reduced, so the correlations overall are diminished. And we, so in one, when the feeling is single electron or single hole, we expect that the metallic behavior will be promoted by Kuhn's scalp. Vice versa happens in the half field case, in which both of that, as, so as I showed you, collaborate. So we, uh, we expect that the uh, uh, mod insulating behavior, behavior is promoted. And the interesting case is uh, all other fieldings, non half field, non single field, in which the two effects compete. And we have so this sort of recipe for bad metallicity, because we have no fine tuning. No fine tuning is needed to have a very low uh, coherence temperature because the, 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 there is no mod insulator ready to, uh, to spoil your thermoliquid phase, but still it is, this thermoliquid phase is very normalized. So now if we turn to the calculation, and this is the same model, uh, this is just an intensity plot of the uh, renormalization uh, uh, or the quasi-particle weight. So black is near to one, and when you go to white, uh, dark, uh, to lighter colors means more and more renormalization. And we try to place uh, on this graph uh, this, some, some oxides. We will see, I mean, this, all these oxides that we put on this graph are cubic. And so they have simple structure in which uh, there is no, uh, no hybridization between the bands. And uh, we have put them uh, more or less where the uh, Z measure the, the mass enhancement uh, places uh, them. So the, the filling is the nominal filling, and the mass enhancement is where they. Uh, is, is, is the Z that is on this graph, is the third axis. And we find so uh, that they uh, interest, the, the main trends uh, found in these materials are correctly captured by our picture. Because uh, let's start from, from, for instance, from strontium violet, which is a D1 metal. And also, uh, I, I have to mention that all these compounds uh, have been also uh, calculations of LG plus DMFT have been done for all these compounds. And, and they uh, uh, and they uh, support our, our analysis very nicely. So, strontium uh, strontium valerate is a compound which is a pretty good metal, uh, but uh, this is because of J. Uh, it can be shown that then, then it's, if in the same calculation one uh, put J to zero, one would obtain a, 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 an insulator or, or almost an insulator. Whereas in nature, it's found it's found as being a nice metal. Um, for the D3 case, like uh, so, in, in three different cesium metal sites, uh, uh, the half field, uh, the case in which the two the T2G bands are half filled, well, there is no metallic uh, oxide known to my knowledge, which is a 3D transition metal oxide uh, half filled. Uh, this is because of the the the, the wound scattering pushing the, the critical interaction strength for. Mod transition very down, uh, very much down. So, 
this is the situation for the healthy case. And very interestingly, uh, the, we have reported here strontium chromium octane, which is a known uh, bad metal with compressing evidences. Nobody has found uh, the, 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 the quantum, the quantum oscillations, there are reports of transport uh, which are contrasting. So we, we, this is a nice example uh, of three materials going from uh, one, two, or three electrons in the T2G band, showing nicely uh, the, the, the trends captured by our model. Same can be said for the 4D transition metal oxides, which are uh, on, on this other line. Of course, their uh, orbitals are a little, uh, a little wider, so the, the, the bandwidth are bigger and the cooling interaction is smaller, so they are placed a little bit below in this graph uh, uh, at a smaller U over half bandwidth ratio. But we also see that by going uh, through the series uh, of uh, increasing uh, filling, we go from strontium molybdenum 3, which is like the best, um, uh, the best metal in, this, in, in the series of oxides, uh, uh, through uh, strontium technetium. <coughs> this technetium uh, is uh, very poorly investigated, but it has a record nail temperature of uh, 1000 Kelvin. And our analysis, in fact, places it exactly above or in the surroundings of the mole transition, which is, by very general arguments, where you expect to have the highest near temperature. And then there is a nice piece of glutenates, uh, which are known to be bad metals, and in fact, uh, they, they lie in our uh, non half field non single field case, in which bad metallic uh, properties are, uh, are more uh, likely to be observed. Uh, now, of course, I don't want to say that all oxides fall in this classification. I think this is like just a nice point, nice starting point uh, to uh, include Hund's uh, coupling effects and know where uh, to start from when one thinks of the, what are the metallicity properties to expect from what size. Then, of course, there is a lot of caveats to be, to be put in the, in the theory. One is distortions, uh, one on which I will spend some words is the crystal field versus Hund's coupling, uh, because uh, we have assumed that T2G and EG bands are pretty far away and we have analyzed only a three band model. But when one thinks of iron superconductors, uh, one has to include all the five bands because then the piece of field is smaller than, than these other scales. And I would also like to mention charge transfer effects that has to be taken into account, have to be taken correctly into account. The last uh, aspect that I want to underline is, is that the moon's coming when we allow for non-degenerate systems, so when some crystal field or some uh, or different bands are taken into, uh, into account, the Moon's coupling always favors in this model the orbital selective mode transition, which uh, we heard of from Matthias uh, lectures. And so I will not spend a lot uh, on, on this slide, but uh, Wound is crucial whenever you don't have a, a big difference in, in, in bandwidth, and in any case, always favors this state. So, uh, and does it, I'm uh, sorry, I uh, will have to skip these plots, but uh, it does it by suppressing the orbital fluctuations. So, renders effectively, effectively the, the orbitals sort of independent from one another and allowing them to uh, have the mode transition in one orbital rather than in all together. So, uh, just a word on nitides. Uh, why is, is, this, is all this analysis of Hume's uh, coupling relevant for NIC types? Well, we can say that uh, strong Hume's coupling is, is there, and uh, that's why we have talked about uh, Hume's coupling in this case. Uh, five bands are the Fermi level, uh, populated by six electrons. So, this is a, one of those cases on which we have seen that the, the two uh, effects of Janus uh, are one against the other. So, when we expect Bad metallicity to be promoted, and, uh, and I think uh, more than uh, what more than a speaker is used the, the, the word Hume's metal, and I guess that these materials are in fact far from the mod uh, the, the mod insulator, uh, but uh, the, the, the strong the correlation effects that one may find find in these materials are due to the Hume's coupling. And then there is a partial degeneracy. So one may ask, and some people have asked themselves, if there is a possibility of an orbital selective mode transition in this compound. So these are the conclusions. Just to, uh, so a few aspects of the wind's coupling that I think are very important for oxides. 
Filling is a crucial variable, and, and wound scuffling based on the filling has a key role in tuning the correlation effects in all sides. Uh, single filling, so one electron or one hole in the active bands, promotes, in, in, in this case, J promotes the metallic behavior. Half filling, J promotes the multics layer, and all other filling as they are this young case in which J promotes bad metallicity. Uh, and strong, strong correlations far from the multics layer. Uh, I think that many materials are uh, trends are well, ca well captured by this picture. And the last thing <coughs> that I, I've, uh, I've shown is that J favors the orbital selective transition, so it generally acts as a band decoder through the suppression of orbital fluctuations. So it tunes each band's correlation separately, and um, materials can, in some limit, show in both string strongly and weakly correlated behaviors coexisting. So, I, I want to acknowledge uh, a part of this work has been done with Yerne uh, Mravlie, which is here somewhere, and so please ask him the nasty questions, the big questions to me, and uh, Anton Georges. Uh, so, uh, thanks a lot. For that. Calculation of the quasi particle weight and how it uh, goes changes in a modern solar transition. Sorry, sorry. Did, uh, I thought you had you had um, a picture of the calculation of the quasi particle weight uh, and how it changed in the modern solar transition. Yeah. Did you uh, do similar things for the orbital selective transition and how it is in the uh, orbital selective localization region? How it evolves? <coughs> Did you look at that? So, uh, you want to know uh, how the quasi-particle weight uh, of the itinerant component uh, evolves in the orbital selective region once the other, uh, some other component of the system has gone uh, Martin flame while moving uh, what parameter? Yes, I, 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 it's something like that, yeah. That's well, okay, uh, I think that, uh, well, I, I couldn't really go through this, but uh, um, it's one characteristic of uh, orbital selective systems in the presence of in scaling in this uh, local picture of the NFT, but as much as shown also uh, in absence of in scaling whenever no global effects uh, are allowed, to have uh, non fermi liquid physics. So uh, it's hard to say, it's hard to call something quasi particle weight in that phase. Uh, what we have found uh, in several studies is that. At strictly zero temperature, you still have a uh, vanishing scattering rate, so you do have a Fermi surface, but uh, the, the sub energy is highly anomalous. So you expect that as soon as you uh, raise a little bit the temperature or any other perturbing uh, effect is allowed, you will lose uh, the metallicity properties and you will find like anomalous responses. As formally, so is the Fermi liquid. Normally it is a Fermi liquid, or at zero temperature it is a Fermi liquid. Yeah, at zero temperature it, 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 it has quasi particles, but uh, it's difficult to, uh, to assess exactly what you want to look at. Uh, so, and I would say uh, the physically what's important is that that phase uh, is, uh, is certainly a bad Fermi liquid, a uh, bad, uh, bad metal whenever you have like, finite, any finite temperature. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Can I see the space with the list, the, your conclusion page with the list of uh, Kunzru uh, uh, sort of... Ah, the, the conclusions? Yeah. This? Yeah. I would add there probably uh, a statement that uh, Kunzru also strongly affects uh, antithermagnetic tendencies in the system because when you even even without the orbital physics, when you have two components of uh, two sp uh, spin split co components of the bands, you have something which likes similar to super exchange. It will have different momentum dependence, but it's still an anti ferromagnetic like. Yeah, you would agree. I, I, I definitely agree. I, I didn't mention uh, explicitly in the beginning that mm -hmm. all this calculation is focused on the paramagnetic properties. So, of course, I mean we've seen a lot of uh, of uh, wounds uh, covering. Uh, Coming into play the, the magnetic properties of the systems, and so I think that is a, a, main, a main effect. Awesome. Maybe next question from Dan. Well, actually, uh, my question was supposed to be similar to the previous one. So, did I get it right that uh, you only consider the effects on single side? Yes. 
Yeah, because actually the spin correlation might be also very important. For example, if it's a correlation, then you can hope to act your orbital gain equal true. If it's anti then you don't. So in that sense, actually, whether you have, uh, for example, that's important for, it's known to be important, for example, for metals like a position like E2 or 3, if uh, you change spin correlations in paramagnetic phase, then you also change effective uh, value of U, either it's uh, U or it's U minus J, O, and so on. So uh, can, uh, can you actually take into account this kind of effect? Well, uh, this, uh so to go beyond this uh, single site study, there are several techniques. Uh, one is uh, generalizing this uh, dynamical infant theory to cluster dynamical infant theory. This has been, this is like sort of a challenge uh, on a three-band model, so it has not been done. Uh, but uh, there are some hints of what's happening by other techniques, of course, and uh, one knows that one has to take into account like most of all in the, in, the, in, the, in the phases in which one has selected coherence, uh, as Matthias uh, said, uh, this phase carries a lot of entropy. So there, uh, it's very likely to be unstable uh, towards uh, RKKY uh, interactions or uh, any uh, to generate physics like of the double exchange type. So mm -hmm. of course, with, with different uh, magnetic correlations uh, coming from uh, virtual processes uh, to the nearest neighbor. But actually, during the talk, yeah, I think there's a, the, this prediction or statement by Ole Gunnarsson, uh, maybe already 10 or 15 years ago, that the effective U over W or of D, the U over bandwidth ratio, which have one electron per side, the, for the mod transition, it ch changes with square root of n. Yes. Is that still uh, relevant today? Well, uh, this, is, this goes into a discussion of, of the critical view of the, of the mod transition. Right. And uh, so um, in, in these single site studies, one uh, has always a co um, coexistence zone around uh, the mod transition. Uh, in, I mean, because uh, there is, it's a first order transition. So uh, there, is a dis there are two critical use. One is for the disappearance of the metal, and another is for the uh, coming from a uh, strong coupling for the disappearance of the, of the uh, insulator. So uh, that argument was uh, for knowing when you go to multi orbital cases compared to the known uh, and studied in the MFT uh, one, uh, one band case. How this uh, coexistent region uh, grows or shrinks depending on the number of orbitals. So in that case, it was shown that uh, the, the disappearance of the metal uh, is uh, has to grow with the number of orbitals, and the, the disappearance of the critical U uh, for the disappearance of the insulator has to grow with square root of m, so that area uh, will, will grow. Going to multi orbital, but in that case, they didn't take into account the coupling. Uh, okay. So the, I the think this will think, think again situation. that yeah. Good. Um, I had a question to the material trends that you with the, the graph there. Yeah. Um, do I see that correctly that you say the infinite layer strontium luthanate is a better metal than the 214? Yeah. Why do you or it's it's a more cubic structure and so uh, it's um, what's a good metal? I mean, I, I always thought strontium ruthenate was not even that bad of a metal. Um, what what's the definition of a bad metal? Well, exactly okay, this, uh, I think it's a question of terminology, but certainly uh, one uh, has a good metal whenever you can measure like a nice T square. Uh, behavior of resistivity uh, in so for a nice uh, range of temperature and certainly this is not the case for uh, it is for 214 it is 214 is a beautiful t squared yes but then I mean, you have you have like a, a crossover to uh, you get in c axis yes yeah so and so you can uh, you, pro you can probably define like um, a, a, a temperature crossover in the in the permeability problems which has been uh, I mean, to my knowledge, in the 214, around 20 Kelvin, you can see the deviation from thermal liquid both in the specific heat and probably in, no. in, probably in copper, you see deviations from thermal liquid in <laughs> 20 Kelvin too. <laughs> 214 is, is, is considered one of the 
best two-dimensional Fermi liquids. Well, as far as I know. Uh, may, may I take uh, on this a bit? So, uh, the, you have a Fermi liquid in this, but you have it until 20 Kelvin. But for instance, if you go to the molybdenum on the right hand side, on the more to the left hand side, you have the same thing until 300 Kelvin. So there is certainly a difference among different cases um, how correlated it is uh, upon where the coherence scale actually is. And uh, in here, in the strontium ultimate, you have a T linear uh, resistivity. In the in plane, in extended temperature range, for instance. Are we talking 113 or 214? 214. 214 in plane has up to up to room temperature, uh, perfect or almost perfect T no, squared. No, that's not true at all. Okay, that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to, to you and all speakers. <laughs>